I'm talking with my father, Jack Fleming. There's a couple of the tornadoes. The tornadoes were a group out of Redlands. I think it was out of... Uh, I believe it was Redlands. Redlands. Two of the surviving members are going to be uh, chatting with Mike Coonert. Th- those members have to be as old as I am. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's see. Uh, at, when you were at uh, KFXM, it was uh, probably 1960 or 62. Well, actually, I started at KFXM on New Year's Eve of 5960. In, in 1960, I'm guessing that the tornadoes were probably not much more than teenagers. Uh, they were, I would say, in their upper teens, like 18, 19. Okay, because I was looking at the list of songs that Mike Coonert sent me. It was a, a list of uh, top hits in the San Bernardino area, uh-huh. and, and that's for August of 62. And topping the list was The Tornadoes. And it was number one, and number two was a group called the Beach Boys, and Beach Boys was one word, and uh, their hit was uh, 409. Right. So the Tornadoes were actually polling ahead of the Beach Boys at that time. At that time, yes, they were, which, which was quite a feat. So you, uh, you had had interactions with them, like uh, record hops. You, you mentioned, was it somewhere in Fontana you had? It was either Fontana or Rialto, I'm sure that uh, you had some kind of event with them? Uh, yeah, actually, I, I was uh, the hosting disc jockey at a uh, record hop, and uh, sometimes we would get live performances to come and accompany us at the record hop. The station, the program director's name is Roy Cordell, and he was one heck of a promoter. And... Uh, he used to get the, these groups to come and uh, accompany us at the record tops. Ah, and, and the Tornadoes were one of those groups. Exactly. Uh, I'm looking at the list here. Their big hit was Bustin' Surfboards. <laughs> <laughs> they were Bustin' Surfboards, and uh, it says it was uh, number one the week before that, and it was just ahead of uh, the Beach Boys, 409 and Surf and Safari. That was August 18th of 1962, number one in Riverside and San Bernardino. Yeah. KFXM, the fabulous 59. That's right. Our, our playlist was known as the, the fabulous 59 playlist. Uh, do you remember any aspects of that uh, event where you were uh, doing a record hop and the tornadoes appeared? They, you say they played. I did at least one. And possibly two record hops with the tornadoes, and oh, the kids have just loved them. Those are record hops. Uh, were there any uh, like actual concerts? Uh, I wouldn't turn them concerts. Uh, it was just we, we we would appear at high schools or social gatherings, and uh, you know, kind of MC the whole thing. Would other bands be there, or would it just be the tornadoes? No, it would just be the tornadoes. Like we have different different uh, stars come out and uh, appear at our record hops, and uh, like I say, the, the kids just oh, they just loved it. <laughs> the, you uh, had a story where the tornadoes were a backing band for a, a featured artist. Right. As a matter, they were the backing band for Cher, and uh, when Sonny and Cher were uh, just becoming popular and. Uh, they appeared in San Bernardino at a local high school. What date would that have been? Oh, golly, that would have been probably 63. I mean, hey, we're going, get, we're going back a few years here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, I was, uh, I was born in 63. <laughs> uh, do you remember anything from 63? Yes, I remember dancing in vitro. <laughs> they were the backing band the, uh, in San Bernardino. They appeared at a, uh, I believe it was San Bernardino High School, who won a contest for collecting, uh, I believe it was Pepsi Cola tops or something like that in uh, San Bernardino High School one. So therefore, they uh, they won the appearance for Sonny and Cher to appear at the performance. 
Oh, okay. So you're saying the high school collected bottle caps, and whoever, whichever high school collected the most bottle caps, got an appearance from Sonny and Cher. Yeah, but it was a promotion by the, I believe, the Pepsi-Cola company. You bet it was. <laughs> Darn right. <laughs> because they want, oh, yeah. they want people to buy their bottle caps. Not just the caps, but what was in the bottles. So this uh, high school must have won the right. They did. They, they collected the most bottle caps, and therefore uh, Sonny and Cher uh, made their appearance. I wonder how you got involved. Well, I was a DJ at KFXM, and I didn't MC the hop, but I did attend. Oh, you were you were just there uh, as a dignitary. Uh, if you want to call it that. Well, you're more of an indignitary, but we'll let that go. <laughs> no, I was just there actually to watch watch their performance. Did you have any interaction with Sonny and Cher? Well, see, I I knew Sonny personally because. Sonny was what they call a record plugger, and, and part of, a part of his territory was the San Bernardino Riverside area. And so I went to a couple of lunches with Sonny. Actually, we became pretty good acquaintances. So you go to this record hop, and you're just hanging out there, not in any official capacity, and naturally you would gravitate toward your friend, Sonny Bono. Oh, oh sure. Like I say, I, I knew Sonny Bono. I've known <clears throat> Sonny for years. We used to have lunches together, and uh, that's when uh, the KFXM offices were in the California Hotel, and there was an adjoining uh, bar slash restaurant, and Sonny and I used to have lunches at that restaurant. And he'd push certain records and try to get you to play stuff, that kind of thing? Oh, yeah. Well, of course, yeah. (laughs) We we went to lunch twice. I went to uh, with Sonny, and... uh, (laughs) It would come time to pay for the lunch, and he he start this feeling in his body. Oh man, I left my wallet in the car. <laughs> <laughs> so so actually, I bought Sonny two lunches when he, when, when he could have been buying me two lunches. <laughs> yeah, I I know that he became a restaurateur later on. Uh, in what city? Uh, Palm Springs. Palm Springs. He owned a restaurant there. I think you should have gone there, had a great big meal, and then when the check comes, oh gosh, Sonny, I, I forgot my wallet. I guess we're even. Yeah, that's a good idea, Mike. So Sonny uh, was at this uh, hop, and uh, of course, because he was accompanying Cher. Yeah, and, uh, that's when they were just coming into their prominence. You know, when they did start to crank out their hits, they were backed up mostly by the wrecking crew. Uh, Hal Blaine. That's true. Uh, right. Joe, Hal, Blaine and, Hal Blaine and company. Joe Osborne, Tommy Tedesco, uh, and all right. of that. Carol Kay. Carol Kay. So right. at this at this record hop, presumably, they, they didn't have the wrecking crew backing up Cher. No, it was the Tornadoes. It was the Tornadoes. Right. I, I I just have to wonder if they had any rehearsal time or if she had to talk them through the songs, uh, if if they knew where the songs were going, or if they did old standards where everybody already knows the chord progressions. Well, you know, I'm not exactly sure of uh, the facts on that story. Uh, I'm sure they uh, got together before the actual performance and decided what they would play and, you know, they would almost almost have to have done that. Yeah. Because I know you, it's... You, you never go on cold. No. Well, <laughs> that's kind of what I do. I'm a, what you call a side man, and I've, I've had to play things seat to the pants, but I'm a drummer, so I don't, I don't need to know where the chords are going. I imagine right. the Tornadoes, uh, at least the bass player, would have to know the progression and where a song is going, and I assume it was... Probably all rock and roll. Yeah, they didn't do any classical whatsoever. <laughs> <laughs> so they left their cellist home. <laughs> and I'm thinking it was probably a, a lot of one four five uh, rock and roll. And I can see them putting forth their best effort to back up Cher. And I, you have to wonder, if they were just getting going, if they were just getting started, she probably didn't have an established playlist. Oh, I, you know, I, I can't attest to that. 
Do you have any feeling for uh, how well the performance went? Oh, the kids kids loved it. Ah, yes. And, and the chaperones and uh, many of the teachers at the high school. And so, uh, overall, uh, the performance went over pretty well? I would say it was excellent myself. Oh, great. And yeah. uh, the Tornadoes, uh, what was your impression of them? Well, I thought they were a very capable group. Like I say, I... I worked with them at least one time, maybe twice, but for sure once at a uh, at a record top. Uh, what what they the reason they would appear was for self promotion, of course. Oh, of course. Sure. Great exposure and great to be associated with uh, Sonny and Cher. Oh, sure, exactly. For a couple of reasons. I mean, uh, they're they're up and coming too. They're in the industry. Uh, Sonny's a promoter. Uh, was was he ever? And I wonder if Sonny was associated with the tornadoes in in that capacity. Uh, no, I I don't believe so. He might have been, but I I kind of doubt it. Ah, uh, okay. Do, do you know what? Well, I was going to say, do you know why he was there? He was there because bottle caps. <laughs> <laughs> they were both there because of bottle caps. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe he was a caffeine addict, and he was there for the Pepsi. <laughs> possible Mike so do you remember the single Bustin surfboards that I do yeah I do remember that and what do you remember about it well I remember it had a very good beat and uh, the people playing the instruments were very good they it was an overall just a really good group well you have to realize in Southern California in the early 60s everybody either was or wanted to be a surfer because it was cool Oh, Mike, it's been a pleasure, and... uh, Well, thank you very much. You're perfectly welcome, and it was very enjoyable.